Now, it used to be the preserve of the very rich or of students on gap years, but now travelling abroad by train is getting more popular. Eurostar has opened a new service to the Alps later on this month, and next year, Great Rail Journeys, it's a company that specialises in rail holidays, is offering 40 new tours. One man who has seen the world from a train seat is Michael Portillo. I think trains have got a great deal better. They're faster, they're air-conditioned, people don't smoke on them uh, anymore. Maybe uh, people's personal habits have improved over time as well. And by contrast, flying has got a great deal worse for, for most people. Long queues to get on, security and all that sort of thing. And then, of course, trains have the charm that they have always had. I mean, they travel from town centre to town centre. They go from the place you want to go from to the place you want to go. And they allow you to appreciate the scenery. And also, you get a chance to see how places change. I mean, if you're travelling from north France to southern France, you see a change of temperament, of climate, of vegetation. You're moving from one zone of Europe, from northern Europe with its uh, cold grey colours to the Mediterranean with its azure colours. You've been doing a series called Great Continental Railway Journeys on BBC Two and it's the last episode tonight at nine o'clock. What's the best journey you've ever been on? (laughs) I really can't pick one out because so many of them are so great. From the series that I've just done, I'll pick one the Schaffberg Bahn, which is in Austria. And this really had all the things that uh, make railways charming. Let's say it was a steam engine. It was a cog railway. It rose almost vertically up this mountain through extraordinary countryside with uh, an ever-changing view of the lake below, at last reaching the summit. And there is a hotel perched, I should think, on a cliff that falls away 3,000 feet in a sheer drop. And that's a pretty breathtaking journey. Sounds amazing. What's your advice for someone who has never been on a train holiday? That they should think about it. We now think about travel too much as being the place that we go to, the place that we arrive at. But why not consider also the places that we pass through? I think our appreciation of the different place where we arrive is all the greater if we've seen how the scenery and the people and the customs and the language and the smells and the food change as we progress towards that distant place. Now, all of that is kind of washed away if you get there in an hour or two hours, but just think about the joy of seeing it evolve through the train window. What are the downsides? There aren't many, except that uh, trains still on the whole take longer than planes if you're going over a long distance. It really just depends whether you think your time is best spent I don't know, by the swimming pool or exploring every building in your chosen destination, or whether you think some of it can be left to chance. You don't know who you'll meet in your railway compartment. You don't know what conversations you'll strike up, what food you may share, what friendships uh, you may make. All of that is the, the chance of railway travel. It's quite unusual that you strike up a friendship on a plane. There must be countries that you would avoid. Well, as someone who makes television programmes, there are certainly countries of which we are uh, wary. When I hear back from viewers, actually, the most extreme places are the places where they remember their railway journeys most. They don't necessarily enjoy them the most, but, you know, that journey you took across India, maybe lying in the, uh, in the luggage rack, or those hours and hours, days and days that you spent crossing Siberia. These are very memorable journeys. Uh, They they have a bit more of a cachet to them than the 527 from Epsom. Michael Portillo, the Travel Trade Gazette's been reporting on the growth of train holidays. Pippa Jacks is the features editor. Pippa, who's using the trains then to enjoy the journey as part of the holiday? Well, um, as you mentioned at the beginning, it did used to be sort of gap year students trying to travel as quickly as they can and perhaps older fans of um, heritage railways and, and steam locomotives and so on. But it's really, really expanding now. Um, it's getting much easier to book rail. There's lots of websites and tour operators which help you piece it all together, whether that's the train to get to London to take the Eurostar over to the continent or um, specialist tour operators who will organise the entire thing for you, which means it's opening up to a much broader age range um, and much different budget categories as well. There's some very, very luxurious um, train journeys that you can take if you want to be in absolute lap of luxury, um, as well as those cheaper backpacker type um, European experiences. I was going to ask you if it can be cheaper than flying, but perhaps then the, the price of it isn't the point, it's the experience. 
Um, it, it can work out cheaper than flying. Um, you mentioned the new service to the Swiss Alps um, that Eurostar is promoting at the moment. And I priced it up this morning and worked out that actually if you flew to Geneva and then you had to pay to take your ski equipment, pay for an extra suitcase, pay for a transfer to the ski resort, it would probably work out more expensive to fly even with the budget carrier um, than to take the, the Eurostar and then the local trains um, and do it by train instead. What would you say are the famous train holidays of today? What, what are the most famous ones? Yes, you know, people talked about the Orient mm. Express. That is, has, has cut its service back, hasn't it, hugely in recent years. Uh, Michael Portillo mentioned the Trans-Siberian <laughs> Railway. Yes. Um, uh, well, they're all over, really. Um, India is um, becoming more and more popular, especially with those luxury ones that I mentioned. You can cross Australia by train. That's very popular. Um, s several in South Africa and South America as well. Ecuador, Brazil. There's a, a fabulous railway um, up to Machu Picchu, the Inca civilization in Peru. So it's the best way to arrive there. Pippa Jacks from uh, Travel Trade Gazette. Thanks for coming on and telling us about that.